we should remember that we are to bear with our brothers and our sisters in Christ. We are to bear with their scruples. In other words, again, when they are hesitant, we are to bear with them. When they are delaying, we are to bear with them. When they are putting off, we are to bear with them. When they are hesitant, we are to bear with them. When they are reluctant, we can't get upset with them. Now, not all of us respond with enthusiasm when God encourages us to step out in faith. When God tells us to move in faith, some of us, we are afraid to do so, while others will roll their eyes. You see, many are settling for less today. Many, as I said last week, they have become complacent in their hearts because they don't have the courage to step out in to move in faith. So the question today is, do you think that God is pleased with that? Do you think that the Lord is pleased when we lack courage, when we lack the motivation to actually step out in faith? You see, God, he gave us each other today for a reason. Because when we roll our eyes at his encouraging word, God, he gave us each other to inspire and to encourage one another. Are you encouraging those that live around you today? Are you pushing those around you today to be better, to do better? There's a song that Hezekiah Walker and the Love Fellowship Choir sang many years ago, and it still comes on the radio today. And the lyrics to that song, it says, I need you, you need me. That we are all a part of God's body. And so somebody somewhere may think to themselves, I don't need anybody. You know, like we saw in the Sunday school lesson, Brother Harry, so many of us, we are prideful today. We are too prideful today, in which we'll again think that we don't need anybody's help. But again, I say to you today that we need each other. So the question may arise from that prideful person. Why do I need you? Why do we need each other? Well, to be frank, I would respond to that question with another question. That question being, how would we make it in the world today if we did not have one another? How would I make it if I did not have my mom, if I did not have my brother, if I did not have my sister, if I did not have the support of my family, all of my friends, my acquaintances, all of you today? How would I be here today if I did not have you? I know and I have seen what a community that works together I have seen what it can do, what it can accomplish should that community stick together. But there's a problem there. You see, not many communities are coming together today, are they? Such coming together as communities in our world today is very rare. It sadly seems to only happen when there's tragedy. That we as a people remember that we are a people. That beyond the color of our skin, that we are, again, a people that should love one another, that should work together, that should uplift each other. You see, it seems today, again, as I said a few Sundays ago in sermons, our world is lacking love. Our world is becoming more and more apathetic to where we don't uplift each other, to where we don't encourage each other, to where we don't motivate, motivate each other, to where, again, we aren't pushing each other to be better. We aren't supporting each other. And I say to you today that that is a problem. I don't know if you agree with me, but that is a problem. 
within the church itself, we see the same thing happening. See, within the church, we know that the body of Christ, that it cannot function properly if the body, the parts of the body is not working together. If the parts of the body are going in opposite directions, then the body ain't flowing. The body ain't working. As Paul said in his first letter to the Corinthians, though we may be individual members of the body of Christ, We are blessed with unique gifts from one spirit for the purpose of working to the profit of each and every one of us who are of the body of Christ. So in other words, we need each other. In other words, we need each other for the purpose of profiting one another. That is, we need each other for the purpose of uplifting one another. But again, look at the church today. And if you look at the church today, you'll see a church that is divided. A church that is separated along certain lines. There's a problem within the church today. In his letter to the church in Rome, Paul spoke more on this thought when he wrote, we then who are strong, that is strong of faith, we ought to bear with the scruples of the weak. The scruples being meaning doubt, meaning the hesitation, meaning the reluctance of those who are weak of faith. The fact of the matter is that some of us, we move with enthusiasm. We move with courage when We hear the word of God. When we hear his voice, we get up and we go. We are off to the races. We move with little to no hesitation. When God says your blessing is over there, go and get it. You see, some of us, we we say, oh, it's over there, Lord. Let me get up and go. However, on the opposite side of this truth is another truth. And it's a truth that is frightening. There again, as I said last week, there are too many that are paralyzed in fear. They hear the Lord says, your blessing is over there. And they look at all the trouble that's in the way. They look at all the obstacles that's in the way. And they say, nope, I ain't going over that direction. I ain't going that way. They see the the storm clouds on the horizon and God says, your blessing is over there. And they say, man, Lord, are you crazy? I ain't trying to go through all of that to get to my blessing. I'll stay right here. I'm fine right here. Some of us, we are so fearful to push towards God's blessing that our faith, it becomes reluctant. It becomes reluctant faith. And I would tell you all that That ain't faith. Reluctant faith ain't faith at all. The reason why it's not faith at all is it's filled with doubt. It's filled with hesitation. And we know what James said about faith that is filled with doubt, faith that is filled with hesitation. You aren't going to receive anything if your faith is filled with doubt. If your faith is filled with hesitation when God has told you to get up and move. How can you dare expect that you're going to get God's blessing when you aren't moving towards the Lord's blessing? Now, I will again would say to you today that those of us who are strong in the faith, we should not only move towards our blessing, but we should look to encourage others. We should look to encourage others, as Paul said, not for our own glory, but in order to please our neighbor and to edify them, that is to uplift them. Andrew, you kind of frowning at me, but I'm going to tell you right now that we as believers, we should look for others to be blessed as well, not just ourselves. As true believers, we ought to remember what our goal in life should be. And that goal in life is not a selfish goal. Yes, our goal should be to inherit the kingdom of heaven, right? 
But at the same time, we must remember what we have been tasked to do by Christ. We must remember his great commission. His great commission, again, it is to make believers of all people. That is, we are to make followers, we are to make disciples of Christ. Disciples of his way, because again, we know that his way, it is a good way. We are to minister the good news among all people. In other words, you and I, we are to encourage others to get up and go to get up and go to their blessings. Now is not the time to sit down. That is what we should be saying to all of those that are around us. God has a blessing for you. It's here in the world. It's not time for you to go and sit down. It's time for you to get up and go and get that blessing. So I say to you today that our goal as well is for us to guide others to their blessings, their blessings for the Lord, especially again, those who are reluctant to move and take possession of their blessing. Now, in order for us to encourage others, I say to you today that unhesitating faith in the Lord is required. I want you to understand today that your unhesitating faith, it has power. Do you realize that today? Faith that does not hesitate, it has the power to not only move you, but it has the power to move those that watch you. See, people are always watching. People are always looking at you to see what you are going to do as a child of God. What better way to encourage those that are around you than to always be moving in faith? Tell me a way that is better. One of the best examples of this type of faith, this motivational faith, it is shown to us through the story of Deborah and Barak. Now, some of us, we may wonder, well, who are these two people? Barak was a general, we're told here in the fourth chapter of Judges. We'll see that he was a general for the army of the children of Israel at a time during the days after Joshua's passing away. Now, during the time period of the judges of Israel, the children of Israel, they often found themselves living on a roller coaster. There are many highs and there are many lows. There were, in other words, good days. There were bad days. There were good times, good periods. There are bad times and bad periods. Now, during the days of Barak and Deborah, we'll see that the children of Israel, we'll see that in the first through the third verse that they were experiencing great struggle. We're told there that they were living under the harsh oppression of Jabin, the king of Canaan. Now, we'll get some insight on Deborah there in the fourth verse where we are told that Deborah was both a judge and a prophetess of the Lord. Deborah, as a judge, you could consider her to be like a commander of the whole army of Israel. In a manner of speaking, Deborah, she was seen like a leader of the people. As we're told there in the fifth verse, she had an office. She had a certain office that we are told the people, they would come up to her office. And the reason why they would come up to her office was because they wanted to hear from her. They wanted to hear her judgment. They wanted to hear her guidance as well. Now, among the judges, Deborah, she was very unique in being considered a prophetess. People always say that the Lord don't use women, but we see that God is using a woman here. The fact that she was considered a prophetess, it meant that she not only heard from the Lord, but she heard, she shared what she heard from God with the people as well in order to guide them along the way. 
Now here in this fourth chapter of Judges, we see a very great difference between Barak and Deborah. The first thing that we'll notice about these two, the difference between these two, is shown to us there in the sixth verse. We'll see here in the sixth verse that Barak was reluctant to deploy 10,000 troops against the oppressor of the children of Israel when he had been commanded to do so by the Lord. God had gave Barak a command to get up and go and Barak, he did this to the Lord. Nope. I ain't going nowhere. You seen Jabba's army. Look at Jabba's army. I ain't going up against that. Barak, he was afraid to move. Now, Deborah, on the other hand, we'll see there in the seventh verse, I believe Deborah was a bit frustrated with Barak. The reason why I believe she was frustrated with Barak was because Barak was sitting down on his butt. Barak, he wasn't moving. Even more importantly about this, he wasn't doing what God had commanded him to do. You see, Barak was sitting down and God had again guaranteed the defeat. We'll see there in the seventh verse, guaranteed the defeat of Jabin's army. They were being oppressed. God said, I'm bringing you out of it. I'm giving you the victory. And Barak was saying, nope, don't care. Now this guarantee from the Lord, it sounds very familiar to what we saw in my sermon last week, where God had guaranteed, had promised the blessing of the promised land to Joshua. And so we see here again this week where God is again saying to now Deborah and Barak that your blessing is right there. All you have to do is get up and go. Take possession of it. And again, I, I say to you again this week, if it wasn't clear in my sermon last week, that God says the very same thing to all of us today. What I mean by that is that the Lord will say to us, your blessing is already there. All you have to do is get up and go and take possession of it. And yet many of us will sit down and we'll keep praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. And, and, and God will continue to say, why are you still praying to me about that same thing? Your blessings are already there. All you have to do is get up and take possession of it. Are you getting up today and going to take possession of your blessing? Or are you doing as Barak did? You see, Barak, he sat down on the Lord. Are you sitting down on God today when God has told you to get up and go and take possession of your blessing? And be real with yourself when you answer that question. See, the problem with Barak was that he was too reluctant to take on Jabin's army. We'll see there in the third verse that Jabin's army was made up of 900 chariots of iron. Israel didn't have anything close to that. Yeah, they had a lot of men, but they didn't have those chariots. They didn't have those war, war horses. And then in Barak's mind, he was thinking worldly. He was thinking, I ain't got nothing to go up against that. And he feared for his life. He wanted to preserve his life when God had something better for him. When God said that your blessing is going through that army, all you got to do is go through the army. Just have faith. Trust in me, and I'm going to bring you through that army. Do you realize that God says that to you today? When we look out, God says your blessing is over there, and, and like I said last week, we may see our red sea before us. And we go, oh, man, it's impossible for me to go across that. It's impossible for me to go over that hill. It's impossible for me to go over that mountain. And God has said, what you talking about? I told you your blessing is over there. All you got to do is get up and go and do it. And again, many of us, we're like jabbing today to where we are reluctant 
to move as God has commanded us to do. Now, let's notice the results of Barak's reluctance to move in faith here. Barak's reluctance to move, it certainly was delaying the children of Israel from their blessing, wasn't it? It was delaying the children of Israel from being delivered from their oppressor. And so when you think about that again, with them being delayed from being delivered from oppression, they again, they were being delayed from receiving the blessing that God had for them. The children of Israel, on that note, they were being delayed from being able to enjoy God's blessing. I hope you are paying attention to the fact that your reluctance to move, it will delay, it will block you from receiving your blessing. When God tells you to move, if you go and sit down, all you are doing is putting off going to get your blessing. Your blessing is not going to always come to you. You have to go and get it sometimes. And if you don't get up and go and get it, the only thing you're doing is blocking yourself from receiving that blessing that God has for you. I don't know about all of you today, but I would be tired of delaying my blessing. I would be tired of blocking myself. It ain't the devil that always blocks us from receiving our blessing. As many of us like to think we give them too much credit at times. As I've said to you before, we are our biggest enemy. In the end, your reluctance to move in faith at times will simply extend your struggles. It will extend your troubles. It will extend your afflictions. It will extend your going through trials and tribulation when you could have already put it behind you if all you did was step out in faith. And this brings me back around to the thought that I had last week. How do you respond and how do you react when the going gets tough? Do you sit down or do you step out in faith? Barak, again, he sat down. And again, I ask you today, when the going gets tough, do you sit down on your faith? To those that are strong of faith, how do you respond? How do you react when you see those around you sit down in reluctance rather than move towards their blessing? How do you respond? How do you react? Do you encourage them to get moving or do you blow by them as you are sprinting towards your blessing? Do you leave them behind as you are going to get your blessing. Now, let's be truthful here. Let's keep it real here for a moment. There will be times that we will have to move in faith regardless of what others do. There will be times where we simply have to get up and go regardless of if someone is going with us. If they sit down, they sit down. When God has told us to get up and go, there are times where we simply have to get up and go. We just have to lead them behind as we move towards our blessing. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, there will be lots of times where when we are sprinting to our blessing, where the Lord will tell us to slow down because there's somebody sitting by the wayside. God will tell us to slow down in order to help the one that is reluctant in faith. To help the one that is sitting down by the wayside instead of jogging or sprinting or walking to their blessing. See, some of us who are strong in faith, we may have moments of frustration with those who are reluctant in their faith. Who are reluctant to move. Just like Deborah. Just like she had with Barak here. 
Yet in those moments, we should remember that love, it suffers long. Love, it is patient. Again, we should remember that we are to bear with our brothers and our sisters in Christ. We are to bear with their scruples. In other words, again, when they are hesitant, we are to bear with them. When they are delaying, we are to bear with them. When they are putting off, we are to bear with them. When they are hesitant, we are to bear with them. When they are reluctant, we can't get upset with them. We have to be of love. We have to be patient with them. We have to bear with them. Though Deborah may have been frustrated with Barak, we'll see here that again, he needed her and she needed him. And we'll see here that she moved out of love. We'll see there in my key verses for today that after being confronted by Deborah about his reluctance to move, that Barak said to her, if you will go with me, then I'll go. Hey, if you if you come with me to go up against Jabin's army, all of those chariots of iron that he has, Barak said, oh, I'll go. I'll go in the heartbeat. And this almost sounds like Barrick was being a bit witty there, doesn't it? Like he was being a bit sarcastic there. But I say to all of you today that I truly believe that this man was in fear, that this man was reluctant to get up and go, to step out and to move in faith. I would even suggest to you that Barrick may have thought that his fear, that his reluctance, that it would influence Deborah to think like him. That his fear and that his reluctance that it would get Deborah to join him in not facing off against Jabin's army. That it would get her to sit down in her faith. I, I say to all of you today that you better be aware of this. You, you better be aware that there are some among you who may be fearful of getting up and going. There are some among you who may be reluctant of getting up and going. When you are strong of faith, those who may be weak in faith, those who may be reluctant in faith, they may try and say to you, wait, where you going? Don't go. It's dangerous for you to go. When God has had that blessing for you and you say, hey, I got to get up and I got to go to my blessing. Those who are reluctant in faith, they may try to encourage you to sit down. What do you think you should do in that time? It's time for you to get up and go. You can't join those who are reluctant and who are fearful, who are trying to persuade you to sit down. You can't join them in sitting down on your faith. Because you are strong in your faith, you must have the courage to push forward through the doubts and through the hesitation of others. You must resist joining them in fear, in their reluctance. When they say don't go, you must go. And you see, when, when those that are fearful and reluctant see that you have the courage to keep on moving, they have a choice to make. Either they're going to stay sitting down or they're going to get up and they're going to be inspired by you. You see, that's what motivational faith is all about. You see, motivational faith, you being strong in faith, you having the courage to get up and go, it can inspire others to get up and go and to move in faith. You see, we need each other in those moments in time. Yeah, consider where you would be today if you didn't have someone around you that encouraged you, that motivated you to keep on pushing, to keep on going, because God's got a blessing from you. I know you have heard that today. I know I heard it. Personally speaking, in August of 2011, when my dad passed away, I wouldn't be here today if I wasn't influenced and encouraged by those that love me. Those that had the courage to keep on going. Then that rubbed off on, on me, my mom and my brother. 
And here we are today. When, when my kidneys began to fail and I was looking around just upset, ready to throw in a towel, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the strength of my mom and, and my brother. All of you that helped push me to keep on going because God's got a blessing for me is what I heard. If God's got a blessing for me, you better believe I want to go and see it. I don't know about the rest of you, but when God tells me that he got a blessing for me, I want to get up and I want to go and see it. Not only do I want to go and see it, I want to lay hold of it. I don't know about the rest of you. where Barak may have thought that Deborah would be afraid to, to go with him, her response there in the ninth verse said otherwise. Deborah said, oh, you, you want to go that route? Oh, I'll go with you. Deborah said, I will surely, without hesitation, Deborah said this, I will surely go with you. Again, there was no pause. There was no hesitation from them. Do you have that kind of faith today? You see, we would say this about Deborah today. We would say that old Deborah was built different. Deborah wasn't built like Barak. Deborah, she, she was built different. See, she wasn't moved by the 900 chariots of iron that, that Jabin and his army had. Deborah looked at it and said, oh, I'll go up against it. Why was she willing to go up against it? Because she had someone on her side who had the ability to push, to move Jabba's 900 chairs of iron out of the way. Do you realize that you have somebody on your side that can move those mountains out of your way? Do you realize that you have somebody on your side that can part the Red Sea so that you can go across on dry ground to get to your blessing today? Do you know that you have somebody that is with you that will go with you through the valley of the shadow of death? I don't know if you hear me here today. You see, Deborah wasn't fearful of Jabin's army. I say to you today that you ought not be fearful of anything because that someone that was on her side is on your side. And that someone is the Lord, our God. God, I want you to understand today. He is on your side. God will fill you with the strength. God will fill you with the courage. God will fill you with the motivation to keep on pushing forward. Are you want, do you want to push forward today? You see, Deborah's faith in God, it motivated her as she desired to move forward. It desired, it, it motivated her to move towards that promise that the Lord had promised to her and to the children of Israel. I would even suggest to you that Deborah had grown tired of God's blessing being put off. You see, Deborah, she desired for her and her brothers and her sisters she desired for them to be delivered from oppression. I think she got tired of living under oppression. She desired to take possession of the blessing from the Lord. Why would anyone be slow to move when God has promised them a blessing? So many of us, we live under the oppression of our fear today when we don't have to. So many of us, we live under the oppression of the voice of others when we don't have to. So many of us today, we live under the oppression of what we can't do because somebody told us we can't do it. Rather than being free from that oppression and having faith in the Lord, rather than receiving our blessings from him, we're letting others motivate us to sit down rather than letting those who are good, those who are of faith, to encourage us to get moving to our blessings. Now we'll see here in scripture today, we'll see that Deborah said to Barak there in the 14th verse, up! 
Deborah told Barry, get up. Get off your butt. Get up to your feet. For this is the day, Deborah said, in which the Lord has delivered victory over their oppressor, delivered it into your hand. Deborah was encouraging the man to get up and to go. This thought, it puts me in mind of what David said when he said, full of faith. He said that the Lord was his light and salvation. David asked, who shall I fear? David, he said, the Lord is the strength of my life. He said, who, who, who should I be afraid of? He and God is on my side. I believe that many of us, we, we need to hear that kind of encouragement each and every day of our journey. That again, God is on our side and we have nothing to fear. We need to hear it from the Lord and we need each other to share that same word of encouragement today. You see, I see every day as an opportunity. I don't know about you. But I see every day as an opportunity to lay hold on the blessings that God has for us. We just have to get up and go to take possession of our blessings. If you have not laid hold on your blessing today, understand, as Deborah said here, that today, this is the day in which God has delivered victory into your hand. God, I want you to understand, he delivers victory into your hand every day. All you have to do is lay grasp of it and hold on to victory. Hold on to the blessings that he has for you. Barak needed Deborah to encourage him, and he even needed her to go with him in order for him to feel confident in having success against Jabin's army. You see, Deborah saying that she would go with him, made him get to his feet. We see there in the scripture, made him deploy the 10,000 that he had. And then they went on to defeat the oppressor of the children of Israel. They went on to conquer the 900 chariots of iron that Barak feared. I say to you today that we need each other in the same manner that Barak needed Deborah. I say to all of you today that all of us, we need a Deborah in our life. We need those in our life that will push us, that will encourage us, that will motivate us to move towards our blessings rather than those that will tell us, hey, man, where you think you're going? (laughs) Hey, man, you're awfully foolish for going that way. It looks awfully stormy over that way. Why are you going that way? Why are you going through all those troubles? Why are you doing it that way when you can do it this way? When we busy praying to God, they busy over there saying, hey, man, you know prayer don't work, but I know that this will work. You don't need those kind of people in your life. I don't know if you hear me here today. See, I say to you today that we need good people in our life. Now, what do I mean by that? What do I mean by good people? When I say to you that we need good people in our life, I want you to understand I'm talking about God fearing people. You need God fearing people in your life. You need those that are holy. You need those that are righteous through their faith in being justified of their sins through their faith in Christ. You need those people in your life today. In the book of Proverbs, we are told that those who surround themselves with wise counsel, they will become wise themselves. We're told again in the book of Proverbs that those that fear the Lord, they are those that are considered to be wise. Again, We're told that that those that are wise, when they learn to walk in a manner of obedience in fearing God, they are told that they will please the Lord as well. 
You see, Deborah, she was a God fearing woman. Deborah was a God fearing woman and she was wise to live in obedience to his word. And she persuaded and she encouraged others to do the same. Because Deborah's faith in God was steadfast, because it was strong, because it was full of confidence, it comforted Barak. It comforted him and it inspired him. Guess what you can do for all of those that are around you today? Because again, you are strong in faith. In his first letter to the Corinthians, Paul wrote to them to be careful of the company that they keep. I say to you today, be careful of the company that you keep because evil company, it can corrupt good habits. And you don't want your good habits. That is being diligent in the word of God. You ought not want that to be corrupted. As Deborah uplifted Barak by encouraging him to move in faith, you need those around you today that won't corrupt your good habits. You need those around you that will strengthen your good habits today. You see, when we need each other, we need to ensure that we are of the same spirit. We need to ensure that we are open to being encouraged by those who are God fearing. And at the same time, we need to also be confident. We need to be strong in faith for those who are around us who may be weak in faith as well. As we have seen today, you and I, we should strive to be more like Deborah. That is, we must strive to be steadfast in our faith. We must be unhesitant in our faith. We must keep on moving. And again, when we do this, when all of us move in this manner, fear and anxiety will go away grow dimmer and dimmer in the hearts of all of those that are around us. In all of us, we will rejoice in the blessings of the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.